the Lebanese are forced to share their country. Around 400,000 Palestinians also live in Lebanon, but it's not their home. Home, for them, is in a country called Palestine, to which they cannot return, despite the PLO-Israeli accord. Most of these are Palestinians whose families fled their homes in 1948, when Israel was created. The land these Palestinians owned is now in Israel. Did your father have papers to show he owned the house? Of course, I have documents. These documents show all the property which my father owned in Acre, mm -hmm. including the house. Mm -hmm. And the house was built at what, what year was the house built? 1935. And he was the first owner? Your yes. Father. He built the house. He, he built owned. it himself? Yes. Yosef Shibel fled his home in what is now Israel 45 years ago, and like the thousands who ran away during the Jewish-Arab war, he's forbidden by the Israelis from returning. We thought that we were living for just a short period of time. We left our furniture, we just picked our light material and clothes, and then we left north to Lebanon. And what else do you have? I have here two photos, one with my friends. Where are you on this picture? This is my, to the far left. You're smiling around in that picture. Yeah. Where is this taken? This in is at the backyard of our house, the eastern part. And this, I'm riding a bicycle here, coming from the southern street, which leads to our house. How old are you here in this picture? 13 years. This is just before you left? Just five, six months before I left. Could you draw me a map of where your house is in Of course, in I can draw a map. This is a roundabout? Yeah, this oh. is a... Uh, it's a main road intersection. Yeah, it was a main road intersection. And after you cross 500 yards, you go to your left 400 yards. And there is the house of my father, Ahmed Shiv. Yusuf, that map is so good. If I went to Acre, do you think I could, I could find your house from that I'm map? sure you'll find it within a few minutes. It, it has if you follow the map accurately. Are you sure it hasn't changed? I don't know. What happened those 45 years? Forty-five years after Yusuf Shibel fled his home, the Israelis forced another group of Palestinians into Lebanese exile, this time from the occupied West Bank and Gaza. They formed a small Islamic Republic here in the mountains. These men are members of Hamas, Israel's most dangerous Palestinian enemy. They now wish to destroy Yasser Arafat's peace deal with Israel. Thanks very much, Abba. Thank you. These were not ordinary Palestinian refugees. They were to become the most famous Palestinian deportees in the world, trapped on a hillside between Lebanese and Israeli front lines. But for these men, their exile meant something else, a chance to plan the religious Islamic nation they want to create when they go back home. Their anger against the West can be found not only here in Lebanon, but inside the West Bank and Gaza itself, among Muslims in Egypt, even now among the Muslims of Bosnia. Hamas is an Islamic organization aiming to liberate uh, Palestine and establishing uh, an Islamic state rather than a secular state. When you say Palestine, you mean all of British Mandate Palestine, including Israel? That's right. But to achieve this Islamic state and to struggle for it, Hamas is fighting. When the Israelis killing our kids, our children, shelling our houses, what, what you could do? Hamas and all other organizations will fight against this uh, kind of treatment of our people inside the occupied territories. Do you really think you can win against the Israelis? 
Yes, I am sure. But Israel has America on its side. And we have our own power, which is Allah. Even for Western reporters like myself, it's not easy to travel the 100 miles from my home in Beirut to Israel and to the land the refugees call Palestine. Today, I have to pack, feed the cat, and close down my home. My newspaper, The Independent, keeps two correspondents in the Middle East, myself in Beirut and a colleague in Jerusalem. If the borders were open, the journey would be a mere three hours drive. Yosef Shibel's home at Acre is just on the other side of the frontier, but the borders have been closed since 1948. So I have to make a 300 mile journey. From Beirut I travel to the island of Cyprus on a Lebanese aircraft, then catch a flight to Israel. But I'd have to delay that search for Yosef Shibel's home, because Gaza was in revolt. The road to Gaza, to what is supposed to become Yasser Arafat's Palestine, stretches south to an Israeli roadblock that even before the PLO-Israeli accord looked like an international frontier post. Hi. Uh, We're going to Gaza, British journalist, Channel 4 Television. Thank you. What lay beyond was a world of destitution and bitterness. There was Hakam, a Palestinian journalist, right on cue to meet me. Even the new Israeli car in which I was travelling had to be exchanged for an old car with Gaza plates. Hamas men shoot at cars with Israeli plates. What a great car you have here. What a heap of rubbish. This would have been put on a junk heap a long time ago in Beirut. Hakam and I were to be witnesses to some of the last days of Israeli rule, days of violence which would shape the land which Yasser Arafat was to inherit. We had driven into a curfew which had restricted tens of thousands of Palestinians to their homes. Is your curfew finishing now? It's finished? Your curfew is over? You had a curfew here. Is it finished now? No, but uh, you're uh, hanging around. You're hanging around or we are? We are. You're not. Not to picture you. Not to picture all the. I give you. I tell you to go up. I close this area. If you. You will close the area if we keep filming. Filming. If I keep filming, you'll close the area. Okay. The Israeli curfew covered most of Gaza City. 